Alright, hello internet! Welcome back to the Blade Showcase for Zeta Blade Chronicles 2. And today is going to be a very special one. Today we're going to be dealing with Poppy Quanto Techno Champion by a factor of 3.14, aka Poppy QT Pi. She is probably, as of right now, my absolute favorite blade for so many different reasons. Like, design-wise, she is fantastic in terms of her concept. The fact that she can theoretically do everything, serve every single role in the game. It's absolutely fantastic, and obviously with a bunch of options, some options might be better than others, but the nice thing about Poppy is that if you're willing to put the time in Tiger Tiger to actually invest in the Aether Shards to go for any build that you want, it can happen. You don't have to worry about like finding the locations of auxiliary cores, or you don't have to worry about finding other materials. Instead, all you have to do is just play Tiger Tiger, and potentially she can fill any role. So we're going to have a quick look at what exactly makes her so special. Uh, actually, before we begin, I just want to say that there's a big side quest you guys have to do. Essentially, it just boils down to you have to go back to Torres' house, and then uh, you go to Leftheria to the um, the Anzel Hatchery. Actually, I believe you just have to go to the Anzel Hatchery first, and then you'll get a heart-to-heart -heart with uh, Poppy QT. And then you can do a quest at Taurus House, and there's a bunch of stuff that you have to do after that. Once you get it done, you finally get the third form. She is 100% optional. You don't have to get this form to get into the story mode, but in missing her, you do yourself a disservice, because she is one of the most versatile blades in the entire game. So, uh, just like with all the other Poppy forms, the effect of her blade combos are going to vary based on what you upgrade with, and we're going to go look into that later. But the main thing we want to look at is her passives. Now, she has Nano Machine Repair. I'm not very impressed by this one, just because by virtue of how healing works in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you're very rarely going to find yourself at less than 30% HP to take advantage of the healing. As well, when you're playing post-game bosses, which is what today's build is going to be about, by the way, like, any time you fight against a post-game boss, they could just burst you down straight from, like, 50% down to 30% and then back down to zero, things like that, so it's nothing you really want to think about. Overclock is quite nice, because it's actually fairly easy to max out your affinity with Tora. so you're going to, like, at max level, it's going to be 100%, which is phenomenal. And there is a chance to reflect attacks. This is very important. The thing about Poppy QT, well, is that she is an attacker, but she is already on a uh, on a driver that automatically has tanks on the team, meaning that there, you'll have no choice but to have the wild warrior thing going on, which is just fine. But like, it's just something to keep in mind that she's still technically a tank. You can't necessarily go full attack unless you build your other drivers in your party to play the tank role so that you can function solely as an attacker. But yeah, that's basically what it is. But here's the poppy swap. This is the most important thing. Currently right now, I have 1450 energy in my converter. Uh, the, uh, the standard core element is going to be ice, but you can change it to anything that you want, provided that you get the uh, manual for it. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't know what, where the manual is, but if you play Tiger Tiger, uh, Elemental orbs can actually be found inside of the game if you play on the hardest difficulty. There's also the roll CPU. I prefer the Master Evasion mod just because I find that evasion can be a little bit more valuable than the damage we're getting. Not to mention that we're already going to be patching up the damage due to her art. So these are the arts that Poppy will be casting on Tora from time to time. This is critical up because we want more critical rates. And aggro draw, this is very important. Uh, one of the things about Tora is that he does have a bit of trouble maintaining aggro, especially when you consider that your healers and attackers will be constantly generating aggro for themselves, so this is a good way to patch that up. And of course there is recharge boost, which is quite nice, you know, the more times you have arts, the more you're able to spam, and it's very important though, we're actually good going borderline crit Mithra for this build that we're going to be having today. In fact, the idea of this particular build with the skills that I've given her are very much based off of the Mithra video that I uploaded on Christmas. So this is going to be critical restore. Uh, this is level 5, you don't have to worry about finding the auxiliary cores because you can just get them um, from the poppy swap. This will give me 30% critical damage, Delta's HP. 
Tora can have the highest HP in the game at 9,999. Obviously, other people can reach that by getting accessories, but Tora innately has that, so he can spend more time focusing on his accessories. So you can have this, and it'll heal a large amount of HP, and because we have so many arts, we can crit often and heal ourselves instantly. We might not get an instant reset like what Mithra has, but it is still pretty fast. There's also Critical Up 5, which is a great boost for a critical hit rate, and Glittering Star which increases aggro every second. Again, we need to constantly have aggro on us. We're still a tank, but this is a great way of sustaining ourselves over and over again. It's a very active way of doing things. And of course, there are these set parts that enhance the specials. So in this case, all of them are going to be team heals. This means that whenever we do damage, we're going to restore 10%, and since we have the ability to crit, we can heal our team constantly. It's really great, especially at lower levels, when you find that your, uh, your teammates are fainting, what you can do is that you can activate your special, then you can run towards them, wait for it to finish, pick up the other guy, and then build up another one, then heal them again. It's quite useful, very good for clutch situations, and it's essential if you want to keep your entire team healthy. Now, in terms of the accessories that we're putting on Tora, it's actually fairly straightforward. This is the Galaxy Cube. I like having the Galaxy Cube on Tora. It's more of a luxury item on other characters, but since Tora is able to afford it, um, it's just really good to have more auto attacks as you go along. And here is the avant-garde medal. You can get this from Haywire Radcliffe, which is from the same room where you can get one of the technical manuals on the World Tree. And of course, this is pretty obvious why we want it. We want to heal as much as possible, and since Tora has the biggest HP pool in the entire roster, then it's really well spent on him. Now, in terms of the pouch setup, I've given him the victory smoothie. I don't have another pouch setup, but that's fine. If you want, you can also give him the plumber escape game. This will increase the damage dealt by specials and increase the effects of blade arts. It's all very important. Now, the thing about Poppy is that because she's so versatile, there's plenty of other options you have. This particular build that I have right now is specifically for dealing with endgame bosses if I want to just tank. Because when you fight against endgame bosses, the only way to deal with the bosses is to build up as many orbs as possible, and that's what this party is going to be based off. Like, we're going to be building as many orbs as we can, and then shattering them periodically, and then bursting them down all at once before they go into rage mode. So, like, if you want, you can also add telepathy, because she does have a break and the launcher, both in the same moveset, meaning that if you have the telepathy, you're more likely to build your uh, your driver arts, and that could be very useful as well. You can also have these um, the skills that give more damage for people that are um, giving you aggro. So you can also give yourself bonus damage, but again, because she is completely optional, and because she does only become available in the late game, most of these options will like they'll still be usable, but again, if your goal is just to go for post-game super bosses, then I feel that something more along this line or something else. Again, I know I don't claim to be the, the lead authority on Poppy information, but this is the build that has worked for me. And that's what we'll be showing for today's demonstration. We're gonna be fighting against a super boss right now, so I hope you guys look forward to that. Alrighty, so here we are at the demonstration area. This is the Aegis Hammer over at Temperantia, and this is Pernicious Benf. This guy is quite annoying because he can CC you to death, he has tons of HP, clocking in at like a whopping level 189. The main thing you'll want to know about this guy essentially is that you are very much so on a timer. I think this can be said for a lot of the bosses, just because the lower health they get, the more the more treacherous they become. But the good thing about the setup that we're using right now is the fact that it's actually fairly easy to build elemental orbs, and that's going to be the key to winning this particular one. So you'll see that we're actually like going to be able to heal people with our critical damage as well with our team heals. So we just go ahead and get in range, start building up. I'm going to go ahead and since Poppy QT is a ice type, you just have to build the first two stages, and then you can follow that up with a third stage, Earth or Darkness, which is what's going to happen with the Rex, who currently has Cassandra. Now, the thing about Rex is that he's actually quite squishy in comparison to everyone else, and I wanted to be able to rectify that. What I decide to do for his loadouts is not give him three attackers. Instead, I made him into a Jack of All Trades. The Jack of All Trades is an attacker, which is going to be Mithra and Pyra, as well as a tank, which is Cassandra, and then Boreas, the healer. This means that he's going to have more HP to work with and more defense. Uh, also, he doesn't have to worry about actually dealing with aggro, so that's something that we get to 
or to take advantage of as well, just because, again, we have several aggro grabbing capabilities on Poppy QT. So again, I'm going to go ahead and build two more stages of ice. I could go into the Cold Snap and build myself the Wind Orb, but we're going to go ahead and start with a Dark Orb and an Earth Orb next, which is going to be something that Nia is going to be looking after. Nia has Dromark as usual, as well as Vess for electricity, and Nim for her Earth element. So we pretty much have all of our bases covered. We can potentially get every single, every single elemental orb in this entire battle. And it's good though, because again, this guy is super tanky and the only way to beat him is just to kind of whittle him down to just over half health and then burst him down. My plan is to do the, t the chain attacks and then like kind of waste it the first time around so that we just weaken the orbs and then have it all broken the next time we build it. Because we can actually build it really, really fast. You can actually see how, how much HP I'm recovering right now. That's kind of the thing about this guy. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is that this loadout is quite good for um, dealing with uh, topples. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the launch because I was a little bit late to react. But one thing you can do is do the attack that does extra damage against topple and then cancel that into the launch. You'll give yourself quite a bit of damage. So now we're going to go ahead and build our Wind Orb. And the nice thing about having Boreas on our team is that he can heal all of us and build a crazy amount of party gauge. So that's something that we can definitely make good use of. We're already capped out for our party gauge, but it's nice to have it in reserve just in case. Thing is, we're Tora, so he has a lot of HP anyway, and since we have crit heal on our team, we don't have to worry so much about, you know, um, dying ourselves, because we can just sustain ourselves indefinitely until he starts CCing us to death. Okay, so the next thing on my list is that I'm going to actually switch to Poppy Alpha and start building up an electric. And to build electric, you need two stones, or two earth elements, and then have Nia finish it off with the uh, Vess. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Burn all of this right now. Let's see, because yeah, we already have an earth type. I don't need to worry about that. And we're going to shield ourselves. Whenever he attacks me with the rigid shield, I'm actually going to get some of my arts back. There we are. Yeah, now we get the Gaia Crash, and then Vess is going to go ahead and switch. While this is going on, I'm going to go ahead and pick these up. Alrighty. So, yep, that's the Lightning Element. Now, all we're missing is Fire and Light. Fire, Light, and Ice. Ice is going to be pretty simple. Uh, same thing goes for Fire. Like, these ones are actually all fairly simple to get. Water is going to be the trickiest one, because we're going to be relying solely on Rex for that one. Okay. Go ahead, switch into Fire. Hopefully Nia's going to follow up with some fire attacks, or some water attacks. Let's see... Okay, so yeah, that's um, that's a steam bomb, straight into ice for some diamond mist. Okay, yeah, and you can see we're build like, you know, we're not instant, instant recharge like Mithra, but the nice thing is though, is that we, you know, we, we can still get it fairly reliably. Here we are. And oh, we're even going to get a break. That's going to be some extra damage for us. If we're lucky, we can get a topple. We might even be able to follow up with a launch. Alrighty. Looking pretty solid right now. This thing can be quite annoying, especially at lower levels. I highly recommend doing this battle. Like, if you're ever going to be playing as Rex, I highly recommend doing this battle with at least 9,000 HP. Otherwise, this guy is going to be a bit of a nightmare. Same thing can be really said for, like, all the, um... All the super bosses in this game. Let's see, maybe that was a bad time for me to switch. No, we should be okay. Go ahead and um, cancel all my attacks. Okay. Now I'm getting knocked up. <laughs> knocked around. Sorry, don't say knocked up. That's a uh, that's false. That's false. Okay, here we go. So yeah, uh, he's gonna go for the mega explosion if he wants, but I'm kind of hoping he'll switch to a nuclear blast because. That's a little bit more preferable for me. Hmm. Let's see, and they do want Mega Explosion, and then hopefully he'll still stick to Pyra. One of the things about this game is that it's also a lot of, about intuition when you're fighting against these late game bosses, because there will be times where the AI is trying to figure out what he's trying to do. Now we got a little bit unlucky there. We've uh, gotten Rex to, we've gotten Rex to actually take the aggro, but that's okay. If Rex ends up dying again, I can quickly just run over to him and pick him up. But in the meantime, yeah, okay, good, we got it all back. 
Okay, so that's a cold snap. You know what, let's go ahead and build another winds. Like, we're not going to give ourselves another orb, but it's nice to have that heal. Because, um, I, I feel the storm coming up. Again, like, it, it's once his uh, HP bar goes to, like, the, the U in Pernicious is when you got to be a little bit more careful. But uh, at this point, it's just about patience, waiting for your AIs to be more cooperative. Hmm. Yeah, if he ends up not giving me the Dead of Winter, then that's fine. Okay, okay, he's on fire right now. Okay, so that's perfect. I just have to wait for this Cold Snap to expire, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, uh... Let's see... Okay, we're gonna go into fire then. I'll go into fire, and then I'll, I'll try to build myself one, so that Rex can save his meter building for Mithra. Yeah, the I should have done last time instead of for building the fire is instead making one for the steam bomb and have a steam explosion. I think that would have been more efficient. But these are again, these are the mistakes that you'll have to you'll have to learn from. Cause like the thing about Rex too is that he can actually build the meters really, really quickly. But um, again, like it, it's it's really tough to trust your AIs to do things sometimes. Okay, so he's gonna go for the nuclear blast, I hope. Yes. So, okay, there's my Light Orb. I believe we have all the elements except for Water. Now, Water is going to be very interesting, but, again, Rex builds meter quickly, right? So, it should be that we'd be able to... Um, he'd be able to build it quickly quickly enough. And I'm going to be spamming my, my level 1 combos just so I can keep everyone else healthy. Here we are. So, let's wait for that Gamma Ray to finish. I would love it. Yes! Awesome! Okay, I grabbed the aggro just in time. Again, th like the aggro boosts, uh, add um, what's it called? The aggro boosts abilities that I have on Tora right now. Sorry, not Tora. Poppy really came in handy there. If I didn't have them, he, he would have actually stuck on Rex for a lot longer, and we might have had to wait a little bit longer. Okay, so this is going to be the fun part. We're now going to go ahead and try to uh, build some, build some of those meters. Sorry, not. We're going to expend our meters. But first, I would like to give myself a little bit of a heal, if possible. Let's see. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll just go ahead and build this one. Okay, so now I'm fully healed, and we're going to go straight to the team attack. I'm not going to break all the orbs. I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of kind of tap them, you know? Give them a little bit of a love tap, but we're not going to actually break all of them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use Drumark for this one, because I believe this also drops some HP potions for us, doesn't it? Nah, I guess not. I guess that's for another time. And we'll have Boreas for this one. Okay, so I didn't break them, but that's okay. We're going to start building our meters really quickly again. Now, this is very important. He's not in rage mode just yet, but we're going to have to be very careful for when he starts going a little bit crazy with his uh, his beast train. That's that thing's a bit of a nightmare. But again, we have Boreas. He builds the meter really quickly with his level 3, and that's exactly what's going to happen right now. Not only does he fully heal the team, but you'll actually see that, again, all that meter is going to come back to us. And we can actually build ourselves a second one. So yeah, I'm gonna do that, and again, uh, like clearly, I'm gonna be healing everyone with team heal thanks to my specials, and hopefully Nia will be able to build ourselves the cold snap. The reason why I use Dromark and Boreas in those ones is because whenever you do a team attack, the driver is going to be using the, the last one that you used once you leave the team, the uh, the chain attack. So if Nia would do me a favor, ooh, we got ourselves a break. That's lucky. Okay, come on. Okay, if that's not going to happen, I'm just going to see if he's going to do an attack, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my level 4 combo. Here we go. Yeah, again, like, I've, I've said this many times before in previous videos, but using a level 4 combo or a chain strike would be your way to avoid terrible, terrible damage, because you're invincible for the duration of the animation. Alright, uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn all these. Okay. He was about to finish us off with a beast crash. That would have costed us a lot of time, but thankfully that didn't happen. So Poppy QC is going to go ahead and break this first one for us. Perfect. Now, for this one, uh, since we've already gotten ourselves a round extend, I'm going to be a little bit cheap right now, and we're going to use Vess. And we're going to kind of just cycle through all the different people. We're not going to break any more for this round, because you need to break a total of four if you want to actually um, get some damage. We'll have Cassandra go next. 
Once you break the four, then you'll get the elemental burst, or the, uh, the orb burst, whatever they'll call them. Okay, so Poppy, you're up next. And if you can hit another one, that would be great. But if not, that works too. Okay, so... Uh, Nim's next. Yeah, and since we need a break, we actually need someone to break. So we're gonna use Boreas to break the ice. Pun intended. Okay, so that's how our round extends. And we're gonna get, go again. Poppy QT. Okay, so now we're down to our last four. This means that we're going to have to try to get... Um, hmm. This could be a little bit tricky. We, we might not be able to finish things off with Poppy QT, but that's fine. Yeah, just finish off with whoever you think is the strongest one. And Mithra, you're up. Awesome. Okay, so we're just in time for Poppy QT to, to do the honors. And this is where it gets fun. Awesome. So that's the full burst, and we're going to be doing some pretty serious damage right now, so please, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. I love these cute, these quick time events. Oh, here comes the overkill! Awesome. And look at all that healing that we did. <laughs> all that healing. We were able to heal our party from zero to full health like 40 times in that combo. But yeah, that is the Poppy QT demonstration, and hopefully people that are watching would also have a, a little bit of a better idea of how chain attacks would work and ways to sort of manipulate them in your favor, because like the finisher is just as important as actually facilitating your orbs, but uh, again, it, it also comes down to experimenting. And, like, this fight in particular, I think I've done it a dozen times before I actually recorded it for you guys. And it comes down to how familiar you are, as well as um, how familiar you are with how the AI is going to work with you. Because sometimes it's a bit of a guessing game. But once you get the hang of it, though, it's quite nice. And you'll be able to take on the rest of the challenges of this game without freedom. So, um, thank you for the dance, Poppy. And I'll see the rest of you guys next time for the next Blade Showcase. I hope you guys look forward to it. Take care, everyone.